guess what? There are some natural remedies that actually work and we utilize them all the time in the hospital. Today, I'm gonna give you 10 natural cures that absolutely have evidence behind them. Beep, Honey, not only is it absolutely delicious, but it actually has true medical uses. Now, I'm a little biased here because I absolutely love my Manuka honey with green tea, but the American Academy of Pediatrics actually recommends honey for a nighttime cough for children over the age of one. When they compared it in scientific research to over-the-counter cough suppressants, it actually performed as well or even better than some of these cough suppressants. But we have to make sure that it's given to children over the age of one because of the clostridium bacteria that can be found in honey, which is potentially lethal for children under the age of one. I really want to hammer that home. I really want to hammer that home. Melatonin supplements. And I know you're probably like, whoa, Dr. Mike's talking positively on a supplement. There are certain uses for supplements, especially when it comes to the hormone melatonin, which is naturally secreted by the pineal gland inside your brain. This hormone actually induces a state of drowsiness, sleepiness, and it's released late at night when your circadian rhythm begins to drop. In fact, that's why I tell you to not use devices before bedtime, because when they release blue light, you actually have a decrease of melatonin secreted naturally inside your brain, thereby making it more difficult to fall asleep. Now, melatonin supplements can work in several conditions, and I use them regularly with my patients. For jet lag, when traveling to a new country and you want to reset your circadian rhythm, supplements, great way to do that. Second, in delayed sleep wake face syndrome, where you have an individual who constantly cannot fall asleep before 2 to 4 a.m., and then they're waking up really late in the day, melatonin supplements can play a role here. Now, I'm not suggesting that you start self-medicating in all of these instances, but it's definitely a good idea to bring up melatonin with your doctor if you're suffering from one of these two conditions. Saline nasal sprays, also known as good old salt water. And I can't believe some of these companies are charging what they charge for a little bottle of water. Granted, they buffer it so it's not as irritating to the nasal passageways and it's in a great delivery system, so I won't hate too much. That being said, nasal saline is an absolute godsend. Whether we're talking about sinus infections, colds, allergies, it does a great job at washing out your nasal passageways, thereby clearing your nasal passageways so that you can breathe. I wish we could all just swim in the ocean and clear our sinuses and passageways like that, but not all of us have an ocean near us, so for those who don't, nasal saline spray. Sugar, sugar, sugar! I bet you did not think I would say sugar has a medical utility because it does cause a lot of medical problems, I'm gonna be honest. Well, the overeating of sugar. Let's not villainize a single ingredient. It's like added sugar to something that's already sweet or doesn't need to be sweet where sugar becomes a problem. In this case, sugar for hiccups actually works. And there's no like definitive scientific research as to how it works, but there is a theory. If you let the sugar sit on your tongue, dissolve on your tongue, it will stimulate the vagus nerve, one of the main nerves of the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digestive nervous system that also goes to the diaphragm. The spasming of the diaphragm is what causes the hiccup. And now, with the sugar relaxing the vagus nerve, thereby relaxing the diaphragm, cure yourself of hiccups. A little spoonful of sugar, you know, makes the medicine go down. Helps the medicine go down. Oatmeal, another one that's also delicious and a medical remedy, specifically for eczema. But we have to make sure that we're using colloidal oatmeal, which is when you take the oat grain and you grind it down into a fine powder, then that powder can actually be used as a skin protectant because it prevents the loss of fluid from your skin. Aloe vera, it has actually a lot of uses for skin, but one that gets me most excited is for burns, specifically sunburns. Man, do those hurt. And the office of NC CCIH actually has shown this to be true. Putting aloe vera on burns speeds up their healing and decreases pain. The reason all this happens is because aloe vera contains chemical compounds known as anthraquinones, which decrease pain, speed up healing, and is a natural way to do so. If you have an aloe vera plant, just cut it and apply. Also be sure, if you had multiple sunburns throughout your life, even as a kid, it does increase your risk for skin cancer, and you should be getting yearly skin checks with your dermatologist or family medicine doctor. Prunes! For those who never had them, prunes can actually aid in the treatment of constipation. What's wrong? You were like looking at me. I think you said prudes instead of prunes. Really? <laughs> Prunes work in two specific ways. Not only do they contain fiber, which helps you go, but they also contain sorbitol, which is a sugar alcohol that your body doesn't digest. That actually hangs around in your intestines and through osmosis sucks water in, therefore having a laxative effect, helping you go. There's some studies that actually show that prunes work better than psyllium, which is one of the ingredients found in a lot of anti-constipation medications. Just be careful if you have IBS, prunes can sometimes make your symptoms worse. That's why I think it's always smart to 
discuss first with your doctor. Calamine lotion. It actually works on burns, itches, and irritations. A prime example of a natural ingredient that once was labeled useless by the FDA and now has found to be scientifically proven to work on minor skin irritations, specifically in cases of poison ivy. Probiotics. This one is a little bit of a controversial one. If you walk into a supplement store and you read some of the labels on the supplements, it looks like probiotics fix everything and anything inside your body. And that's just simply not true. The evidence we have for probiotics comes from antibiotic associated diarrhea. And basically what happens is when you take oral antibiotics for a skin wound, for an infection in your upper airway, it actually acts everywhere inside your body, including your gut, thereby killing the good bacteria, the probiotics. In fact, that's what probiotics actually means. Because inside of our bodies and on the outside, we have a ton of bacteria living on us. And this bacteria lives in symbiosis with us. It actually helps us live, sometimes getting nutrients out of certain foods, ones that we can't digest on our own. So it's a usually a healthy relationship. But now when we take antibiotics to fight off the bad bacteria, we incidentally kill the good bacteria as well. So by taking probiotics, you can actually help prevent antibiotic-associated diarrhea. As more evidence evolves, we're gonna find out more and more about the bacteria that's living in our gut. Yummy. Duct tape. And I'm not talking about fixing something in your home. I'm talking about warts. Warts that are caused by a virus known as the human papilloma virus. You cover it in duct tape, every six days you change it, and it potentially can help speed up the healing of that wart. This method actually has a scientific name called the tape occlusion method. And they found that the stickier your tape, the more likely it is to stay on for that six day period, the more likely that your wart is to go away. Now there are other methods of treating warts like salicylic acid and cryotherapy, but those sometimes can be uncomfortable and painful, especially for children. Tea bags. And I'm not I'm not talking about drinking the tea. Well, I'm talking about drinking the tea because it's delicious. But once you're done drinking the tea, you could take the warm tea bag, make sure it's warm and not hot, and use it as a warm compress on your eye if you have a sty. What do you know about those rhymes? A sty is actually a blocked gland in your eye that causes a buildup of bacteria, potentially a mild infection. And when you put a warm compress on, you help open that gland up and facilitate drainage. The natural remedy that I think has done the biggest disservice to our society is soda. People say, you have an upset stomach, have some ginger ale, have some Coca-Cola. In fact, that's how some of my friends when they were kids got hooked on Coca-Cola. And it's not that you shouldn't drink soda ever. Evidence is there that children drinking gallons and gallons of soda a week, maybe a month, actually have higher rates of obesity later in life. Because the cholesterol plaques that cause heart attacks start forming in your early teens. We're actually propagating two problems, not fixing the upset stomach, and two, increasing rates of obesity. To me, that's that's a big, big no-no. There's been research that actually tested these theories of drinking soda to help replenish electrolytes or hydrate sick kids, and it doesn't work. In fact, ginger ale was thought to work because ginger has some anti-nausea properties, helping relax the digestive system. But you're much better off drinking a true ginger tea than you are a ginger soda because the traditional ginger sodas have barely any natural ginger in them. <sighs> I get frustrated when those natural remedies try and trick you. Here's some natural remedies that are absolutely absurd from Facebook health posts. Click here to check that out. And as always, stay happy and healthy.